I know what you're wondering. What is true? And what is false? The Witch Queen is an unsettling mystery. <laughs> our biggest foe, Sabathun, has our grandest tool, the light. It's paying off narrative threads that we planted way back in Destiny 1. We're shedding that dogma of light equals good, darkness equals bad. We're really entering the mists and trying to discern what's in front of us and what's lurking just underneath the surface. What is your truth now? There are a lot of bombshells in the Witch Queen narrative. You want us to hit them. I need us to hit them. She's got this light suppressing technology that the Cabal were using in season of The Chosen, and now she's going to help us use that against the Lucid Hive. When you're working with Kaya Tall, she has a different approach. It's not about asking questions, it's about getting in there and extracting. As soon as we see the knight pop its super and it has two shields, you immediately are like, oh yeah, I see that connection! And then it's like, <laughs> and then you're like, it hits you with those things and then you're, you're dead and it's just a, an amazing Whoa! experience. The Guardians themselves kind of feel like a fire team that you're fighting against. They've got every class represented. The Acolyte, when that character casts, does very similar thing as the player, like the Arc Wizard. The sparks go out, it's ready to go. If you're not smart about it, if you're not paying attention, you are essentially going to have to play that fight over again. A ghost is your companion, and now suddenly you have one in your hand and you're about to crush it. The first time it happens, you're like looking at your hand like, I can't believe what I've just done. Am I doing this? Should I be doing this? I have a ghost. Yeah, like, exactly. What, what, what is, is going on? <laughs> If you're in a really difficult encounter and one of your teammates dies somewhere out in the open where you normally wouldn't be able to get to them, you can bring that shield up and actually get the revive and then fall oh. back. Oh, it's like a light shield. Weapon crafting lets you target a specific role and go and build that and you know how long it's going to take you to get there and you get exactly the thing that you want. I really want to see what people do with it and like the feedback that we're going to get and people sharing all of the things that they're doing with that new system. You're creating your guardian and you want to be able to shape your guardian into what you want them to be. And this gives us a great opportunity to continue to do that. We have an exotic machine gun where the whole idea is be the Colossus. You can launch yes. a barrage of up to 20 homing missiles. It's a comical amount of projectiles on the screen. <laughs> We're doing an exotic glaive for each class this time, and the exotic perks tie deeply into the mechanics of the classes. We think they're going to be really cool additions to build crafting. We've got, you know, the usual suite of raid weapons, destination, activity, seasonal. I recounted it this morning, I think it's about 50 new weapons. You're gonna have two new exotic armorics for each class, totaling six, one stasis, one non-stasis. The Titan stasis exotic. Cast your barricade, and instead of, you know, this traveler's light and the rally barricade, you create a giant wall of ice. Even though this thing is massive, you still get all the benefits of a rally barricade. Wow. Warlock void exotic. We called them the devouring rift legs because we wanted empowering rift to feel like it had a place in endgame content the way the healing rift does. Empowering Rift doesn't heal you, well, what if it did? In Season 16, you're going to see a massive revamp to the Void subclass system across all three classes. This is a huge update and will allow players to build craft in ways that they've never done before. One of the things we wanted to do is create a core set of verbs like we did with Stasis. Anyone can run suppressors now. I think that's the pretty cool that's thing probably, to be I'm able going to do. be running suppressor yeah. grenade oh, yeah. We wanted you to feel like you were the energy vampire, feel like you were the night stalker, feel like you were that protector, that big sentinel titan. So you're gonna see things like Bastion, a new titan aspect, where you take your big old sentinel shield, slam it into the ground, and create this void barricade that's gonna apply overshield to you and your buddies. My favorite aspect is probably Child of the Old Gods. As this warlock controlling space and time, I'm able to rip a hole into another dimension and then pull out this little like sentient black hole. Whenever I target an enemy, my little black hole buddy is gonna fly over there and start draining their life force. We're gonna take the fantasies that you know and love today. We're gonna embellish them. So what you'll see is like all of the new abilities, all the new actions you take, reinforce that to the core. Pretty excited about it. 
Witch Queen is very much the culmination of the last six to seven years of just destiny altogether. And really, this is starting the road to the final showdown. But things aren't necessarily just dark and light anymore. There's a lot more nuance in the game. It's going to be a real fight. Players have something that they're really going to be challenged by. I can't wait for everyone to find out what's been going on with Sabathun. Like, I'm excited. <laughs> you guardians are so clever. Aren't you? <laughs> From the drone world to the campaign to the customizable build crafting, it all comes together to make Destiny feel really new and fresh. We've got more Destiny coming this year than any other year before. It's one of the most ambitious releases we've ever put together, and the team is firing on all cylinders. Tell me, Guardian, what do you think you're going to do? How are we feeling? Everybody good? Yeah? Everybody like what they saw? I can't believe it's already over. I was expecting it to last longer. That's what she said. But no, really, I did expect it to last longer. Something has changed with cutscenes. Everything looks so damn good. Have y'all noticed that? Like the cutscenes, there, there is a noticeable difference here in, in terms of quality. Is it, is it that Sony money? Is it that Sony money? Right? It could be, yeah, it could be. I love the difference between like the underbelly, right? The swampy portion, how it, how it, it, it vastly changes. But even though this looks so much prettier here, like this looks way more gorgeous, it's not right. It's got a, a level of creepiness to it. So, so all of this stuff right here, I honestly think that this expansion is going to have a more of a horror slash I mean, it won't be like fear level horror, but it's going to be s scarier at least. You know what I mean? Okay. So you've got classic and legendary. Legendary will be, of course, the harder portion of the campaign. Okay. Okay. Recommended 1360 on both. You'll we'll just probably be dealing with champions. And then this is the, this is the area. Okay. So you got the enclave, which is where we're going to go to craft weapons over here in this corner. And then this is Savathun's throne awesome. world. Okay. The quagmire. The fluorescent canal, lost sector, lost sector. Okay. What's this right there? Court of Thrones. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I just want to point out something. Is, is the crow not looking more and more like Aldrin? Just the way he's like balancing his blade. I mean, just, I'm just saying he's starting to get that look again. You know what I'm coming from? Like right up in here. Like he may just go bad at any moment i love that we need kaido because i think she's she's an amazing character to begin with uh plus she looks dope i'm just saying just absolutely uh the sexiest cabal i've ever seen because remember we talked about the lord the other day didn't kaido pick up the cage that gall used to trap the traveler we're going to be using whatever that is next season to deal with the loosened brute and this all makes sense considering most of the weapons that we're getting. They're very much cabal themed. Are we going to be able to wear this gear? Please. This hive gear looks so damn badass. Dude, the hive have better drip than us. They literally look better. They have already won the battlefield. Just because of that. Look at this blade barrage. Those are the blades are like sitting there floating on the Those side. And then he sends them off. It just makes our Blade Barrage class look like shit. Look at the wave it is on the back of his hand. Like, it's almost like it's trying to... It's almost like it's trying to fight you. Our, I can only imagine, like, our ghost, like, immediately just, like, peeks his head up from behind our backpack, sees us killing all these hive ghosts, and just, just goes right back in. <laughs> look away, little buddy. I'm about to fuck up all your cousins. Okay, so we have sniper rifle. I, to me, it looks like... It looks like it has a, a gun model similar to Alone as a God. So we have a weapon, the Enigma Glaive Void Special Weapon. Okay, so neutral elements. Okay, that's going to be the component. Would Grave Robber just work with the melee function of the weapon? There's two subsistences. I don't I don't really understand that. What's So you could just go ahead and slot both of them in right now. 
Is it an enhanced version of the perk? Hold on. This changes everything. Enhanced feeding frenzy. I don't, I, I get, I guess you just have faster reload. It would just be faster. Re I mean, technically it could work. Essentially every perk in the game has doubled. Okay. What if we had enhanced rampage? Where instead of 33% more damage, 50% more damage. Oh my God. That would make so much sense. That's why Bungie nerfed those perks to begin with. It was the long game this whole time. They were in fact going to make enhanced perks, bringing the damages back to what it originally was. Is this the Trials of Osiris Glaive? 55 rounds per minute. Adaptive Glaive. Hybrid melee range polearm with frontal shield generates energy. Dealing damage. You could raise the shield with your block. Depleting energy over time. Okay, so it doesn't actually consume ammo. The melee, you do a kinetic melee combo. There's a damn eye right there though, guys. There's an eye. I don't know. I see I and I think I think trials every time. It's not trials. It's an origin trait, though. It is an origin trait. It's definitely trials. That's got to be trials. Chat, y'all keep giving me different answers. It is an eyeball. So is it in fact alacrity? This is a very big moment. Okay. Because we just crafted it. Meaning we're going to be able to craft in-game loot like trial weapons and grandmaster weapons because there were still some questions out there of whether or not we were going to be able to craft these weapons or if it just had to be earnable only throughout the activity now the adept yes yeah, sure I'm, I'm sure the adept will still have to be earnable <laughs> but on a real note kill clip on a glaive who would have thought right how does that even work is there any possible way to make the melee proc kill clip or okay you shoot you reload and now you melee. Does your melee now do 33% more damage? Is it is it different? Sure. But at the same time, it's not like we could test this on other weapons. We don't exactly have the ability to slap someone with the last word. Okay, okay. Let's take a look at this real quick. Osteostriga. Steady rounds. Polygonal. Some weird traits. Um, what is that? Composite stock. Pulling this from memory. Uh, things that are required. Ruinous elements. Ascendant alloy. Neutral element, glimmer, resonant alloy. Okay. Okay. Impact 25. Precision archetype 25. 78 range, 75 stability. Don't know what the zoom is, but the range and stability on it is pretty damn nice. Victory is not in the unmaking of an enemy, but in the remaking of an enemy into your blade. Ninth understanding, seventh revision of sorrow. That's some creepy ass shit. I don't even like reading that. Victory is not in the unmaking of an enemy, but in the remaking of an enemy into your blade. That's that's got like put the lotion on, put the put the lotion on vibes all over it. You know what I'm coming from? We take a weapon, a, a hive, we turn them into a weapon to kill more hive. It's literally the worst thing that can happen. And you know there's a hive out there that's like, we saw Uncle Joe today, but he wasn't. Uncle Joe no more. <laughs> By the way, guys, the amount of weapons we are getting in this expansion is bigger than any expansion. He said 50 weapons there. I know 42 confirmed, but he's saying 50 plus weapons. It's 42 weapons, not counting exotics. Oh, okay. Y'all hear that? Two new exotics per class. One, one stasis, one not stasis. So that helmet that we saw on the Titan, the flaming helmet, that's an exotic. Empowering Rift doesn't heal you. Well, what if it did? So they're merging two different rifts. Okay, okay. Echo of the exchange, void fragment, melee final blows grants grenade energy. Echo of remnants, your lingering grenade effects, vortex grenade, void wall, void spike, and axiom bolt have increased duration. There's going to be six different types of grenades. Vortex, void wall, void spike, axiom bolt, scatter grenade, suppressor, suppressor grenades. Okay, suppressor. Our speculation, we're also going to see this on... The other classes. The, your lingering grenade effects. This is like overcharged grenades. Echo of reprisal. Final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy. So it's almost like Whisper of Bonds. But instead of it being tied to stasis kills. It's tied to just final blows when surrounded by combatants. Chaos accelerants. Press and hold to overcharge your grenade. Making it deadlier and more effective. 
Vortex grenades increase the size and lingering duration of the vortex. Axiom Bolt creates an additional seeker. Scatter grenades has submunitions tracked to nearby targets. One of them is a magnetic grenade. Is it seven grenades? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm only... <gasps> because one of them selected. So it's seven grenades. This chaos accelerant, we already have that, right? But again, like the fragment we just looked at a second ago, that also beefs up our grenade. That fragment in was synergized with Chaos Accelerant. Child of the Old Gods, we've seen this before. Cast your Rift to create a Void Soul. When you damage a target with a weapon, your Void Soul flies to them and then drains them, doing damage and weakening them. When a target is being drained, you are granted grenade and melee energy. If running a Healing Rift or health, if running an Empowering Rift. Here's the question. How would this work with the new Warlock Exotic? Because you're technically running a healing and empowering rift. Defeating a target who is being drained by your void soul grants class ability energy. That's what I mean. You might get both. There seems to be something internally at Bungie happening that's like, no, we're going to make something bigger than that. We're going to make some of these supers IP defining. Aye, aye. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.